Okay, Zog to Gemara. We're on Davhei and Medalef, the first line on the top. Amarav Megillah Bismana. When you're reading the Megillah in its time, which refers to on Yudalid or on Tesvav. So then, Kaira Naisa Philabi You can read it even yourself, without a minion. Shaloi Bismana. If you're reading it not in its time, like we had in the Mishnah, you're reading it before, the, the, the villages that go earlier. So then, Basada. You have to read it Dafke with a minion. So Rashi explains the reason is, ah, um, put him itself, when everybody's reading the Megillah. So even if you're going to read the Megillah alone, because everybody's reading it, so you have the Pursume Nisa, you publicize the miracle. But if it's on a day that only the villagers are reading the Megillah, but everyone else is not, so for these few people, whatever number of people it is, if they're not going to read it publicly, it doesn't have the proper Pursume Nisa. So therefore they should read it Dafke with a minion. Vasi Omar, Vasi says, Bein bismana, whether it's on Yudalid, on the time of Purim, Bein Shaloi bismana, whether it's Shaloi bismana, for the people of the villages, Basara, you always must read it with a minion. Hava Ovde, so there was once an incident, V'chashle Rav, and Rav wasn't feeling well, sorry again, but that doesn't mean Rav wasn't feeling well. Hava Ovde, there was an incident, V'chashle Rav, Loha de Ravasi. And Rav was chayshish, he was concerned for this that Rav Asi says, that you must see, you must uh, hear the Megillah with a minion. I'd say he was looking for a minion, even though he himself said that when you read the Megillah on Purim, on the Yantif itself, it, it, you don't have to have a minion. Okay, so Gemara asks him this, Umi Rav Hachi. Did Rav himself say that you don't need a minion on Purim itself? So it was said in the name of Rav, Purim Shachali is B'Shabbos. When Purim comes out on Shabbos, then Erev Shabbos Zmanam. On Erev Shabbos, it's the time. So what do you mean by this expression? If Purim comes out on Shabbos, Erev Shabbos is the time. Erev Shabbos Zmanam? Is Erev Shabbos the time to read? Maybe Erev Shabbos you have to read before the time, but it's, it's not the time. So how does he say this Lashen? As Rashi here says, it should have said the Lashon similar to what we had before. You maktim, should have said makdimin, you read before, but why is he saying Erev Shabbos is the time? Elo lav hachikama. So don't you think, again, I think I've missed a few words. Vaha Shabbos manamu, the time is Shabbos. So the Gemara answers, Elo lav hachikama. Don't you think that what they were saying in the name of Rav was as follows? That shaloi bismanam kizmanam. The mitzvah of reading the Megillah, even when you read it before its time, has the same halacha like when you read it on its time. Just like when you read the Megillah on its time, you can read it yourself. Even when you read it before the time of the Yantif, you could also read it biyachid. So the you see that Rav himself held that the mitzvah could be read biyachid always. When Rav said that Erev Shabbos, it's the Zman, he wasn't saying it regarding this halacha of reading the Megillah with 10 people. When he was saying that Erev Shabbos is the time, he came to exclude from Rabbi's opinion. The Amas we had before, Rabbi said, Once you push off the people from the cities, from Shabbos, when they should read the Megillah, they should be pushed off, not to Friday, but to Thursday. So how come Ashmala? So this is what Rabbi was teaching us the Erev Shabbos Manamho. That no, that we don't push them off to Thursday, but Erev Shabbos is the time when you read the Megillah. That's the Pshat and what uh, Rav meant to say. When you get to the Halacha B'Payel, of course we pass in that you can read put in the Megillah even B'Yachid. You don't have to read it with a minion. It could be Yaitzi B'Yachid. However, um, as we had before in the Gemara, there is definitely a big hiddur to hear it with a minion. I mentioned before in the Gemara, when you get to pushing off the Avaida in order to hear it with a minion. But it's not a chiyuv. I mean, according to Rav Asi, you must hear it with a minion. Without a minion, you can't hear Megillah. But we pass it like Rav, that you can hear the Megillah even be Yochid. What's considered to be a large city that we said in the beginning that a large city reads the Megillah in its time on Yudalid. Kol Yeshba Asada Batlonim. If you have 10 batlonim in the city, what are the 10 batlonim? People that are not working. What are they doing? They're in the Bismedrash all day. We'll see in the Gemara. Paches Mikan. If you have less than 10 batlonim, Hareis Kfar. So that's considered to be a village. So, and over there, regarding the people in the village, it was said that they're Magdimin, that they can read earlier. So this is interesting because before, how did we define what does a Kfar refer to? The Akfar refers to those people that they come in, the Yemaknisa, 
right? People that are in the villages and therefore they don't have anyone to read the Megillah for themselves and they come in the Yayim HaKnisa to be able to uh, hear the Megillah. And over here, the Gemara is giving, the Mishnah that is, is giving a sort of a different definition of what the difference between Ayyadah's Gedalus and Kfarim are. So there are some of Farshim that say that this is an additional point. Besides the simple point, which is the Kfarim and the Ayyadah's Gedalus, the way they are simply, the Kfarim are places that they don't have what to read the Megillah for them and they have to come into the Yemak Nisa. But the Mishnah is saying in addition, and even when you have a city, but if that city does not have a Sarabat Lanim, they're also allowed to read the Megillah earlier. That's an additional point. That's what some of Farshim say. Okay, Zok the Mishnah Vaiter. Be'elu Amru Magdimin. Regarding these days here that we had, regarding the Megillah, they said that you can read it before the time and all these dates. V'loy ma'achin, but you never can read the Megillah later than you dollar tesvav. Aval, there are other things that we find that you, you don't do it earlier than the time when you have to t- take it to a different date. But you do it later. Zman Atzi Kayanim, the time when the wood was brought to the Beis Mikdash, There were families that had their dates that they used to celebrate. And there was a whole carbon and a whole yomta for them that they brought the wood for the Mizbeach. So there were set dates for this. We learned this in Mesech the Tainus. So if they, for whatever reason they can't do it on that set date, it came out on a Shabbos or whatever it is. So then they'll do it later. And also Tisha B'Av, and, and with Tisha B'Av falls out on Shabbos, Chagige. You have to bring the Karma Chagiga on the first day of the Yom Tif, and if it falls out on the Shabbos, or Hakel, Hakel is on the second day of Sukkis, falls out on the Shabbos, you have to push it off. Ma'achrin v'leim magdimis. All these things, you delay it, and you don't do it before. Now even though regarding Purim it says that you read the Megillah earlier and not later, but those days are allowed to make a Hespid or to fast. And it's also mutter to give matanis lavyenim on those dates. So here there's a machlekes rishayim regarding this matanis lavyenim because from the lashon of this mishnah it's mashma that on the earlier dates when you read the megillah you're allowed to give matanis lavyenim, but the main chiyuv is on Purim itself. But in the brayso before we had that it said that on the days that you read the megillah earlier you have to give matanis lavyenim then because the poor people are waiting to the time when you read the megillah to get their matanis lavyenim. So some say that it's a machlekes, and therefore they pass like it says in this Mishnah, that the main time of Matan Slavyanim is on Purim itself, and not on the days earlier. But others say that no, the Taisa Sirid actually says that you have to take out from the Mishnah these words, Matan Slavyanim, because before it said, you must give the Matan Slavyanim before. So the Mishnah Vaiter, Amir Abiyudah, when do you go and read earlier? If it's a time or a place that they go into the city on Sheni Bechamishi. If they don't go into the city, there's nothing unique about a Yema Knisa, that it's a time when the Bezden gathers, so they don't go into the city, Sheni Vachamishi. And So then even the people of the villages have to read the Megillah on Yudalar in the time of Purim. So, the Gemara Tone, we learned what are these Asara Batlonim? Asara Batlonim Shebe Beisa Knesses. These Asara Batlonim are people that are always in the Beisa Knesses. So Rashi says these are people that don't work. And they're being fed, they're being supported by the people in the community. And they're always in the shul, in the Beis HaKnesses. So it's interesting, the Lashon of the Gemara is Beis HaKnesses, which refers, the Pashtas, to the place where you daven all day. Beis HaMedrash is a place where you learn. But they're in the Beis HaKnesses to daven all day. That's the pshat that it seems like Rashi here is saying. But there are, the, the Rambam says that it refers to people that are learning Taira all day. They are, they, they, actually, the Rambam says two things. These are people that take care of the Tzor Chitzibur, community activists. And also they sit and learn Taira all day. So therefore they're being supported by other people, or maybe from the fundraising, or whatever it is. But uh, they don't, uh, that's not, it's not necessarily the davening all day, but it's learning all day. Another point that Soma Farshim speak about an interesting thing. So what does this mean? Do you have to have set 10 people in the city that are always doing this? Or is it enough that you have, there's always 10 people in the shul there that are davening all day or learning all day. Sometimes it's these people, sometimes it's other people. It doesn't have to be always the same people. So much that's a is about this, whether it has to be dafka asara or a set people or not. The Eilo Amru Magdim Veloy Machrin. So here regarding Purim, you read earlier and not later. My time, what's the reason? Because regarding Purim, the Pasik says, Velo Yavr, you can't go past your Dalar and Tesvab. Another thing, in the name of the same Amaira, on another subject. From where do I know? That I don't count additional days 
to the year. What does this mean? There's the solar year and the lunar year. So what happens? The year, the Shna Salavana, is 354 days. The year that's based on the cycle of the sun is 365 days. So the question is, when you start the year, let's say you're starting the year from the Shredish Nisn, you come to the end of the year, so you only have 354 days. So maybe to complete the year, you should have to add another 11 days. What is this Negeya to? So Rashi says this is talking about a person that made a nether. A person made a nether for a year. So maybe a year means the full length of a year, the solar year. So if he made his nether and he starts with Shredish Nisan, when it comes to the end, he should have to add 11 days to complete his nether. So therefore he says no. A year is the lunar year that we count by, and you don't have to add 11 days to that. So how do we know this? Shanem hashana, which means chadoshem atamayna l'shanim. We count for the years, the months, that's what a year consists of. And v'yatamayna yomim l'shanim. You don't have to add additional days, 11 days to that. Similar thing, the Rabbana de Kisri, Bishum Rababa Amru, Rabbana of the place Kisri, they said in the name of Rababa, Minayin she'em achashvim shois l'chadoshim. How do I know that I don't have to add hours to the months? So it's similar regarding a month. If you have a month that's 29 days, many of the months of the year are only 29 days. So the, the, the cycle of the moon in a month is more than 29 days. It's 29 days, 12 hours, and 793 chalokim. So there's more than just, uh, so maybe you should have to add the additional hours after the month. And Rashi here says, what is this relevant to? Let's say regarding a get. If a person gives a get and he makes a certain condition, that this get should be effective after a month. So maybe that month should be the full month, the whole cycle of the moon, including the additional hours. So you don't have to count those additional hours. Shanama at chaydish yamim. The Pasik says at chaydish yamim. This is over there regarding when they got the slav. So yamim at the machashev lechadoshim, you only count full days in a month, via the machashev shayis lechadoshim. You don't have to count additional hours to the month. Then it said in the Mishnah, All of these uh, dates, so you have to delay them if necessary, but not earlier. So what's the reason? The reason is, 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 the reason the reason is, the reason is, the reason is, the reason is, we don't want to do something negative earlier, then you have to fast. You're going to fast on, on before Tisha B'Av. Mashiach could still come, you, may, you might not even have to fast, so leave it for the latest date possible. And regarding Chagig and Hakal, why do you delay this? Because the time of its obligation has not arrived yet. It's on, it's on Yantiv Chagig, and Hakal is on the second day of Sukkot, as the Pasuk clearly says. So you can't do it before the time. The, the Gemara does not explain regarding the Karbana Eitzim that was mentioned in the Mishnah, but Rashi says that it's similar regarding Karbana Eitzim. The dates that the families had that they brought the Karbana Eitzim was based on a certain nether that they made for these dates, and before that date, the time hasn't arrived either. The Mepharshim also explained that they, it looks like the Gemara could have said a similar reason regarding Tisha B'av. The time of Tisha B'av hasn't arrived yet. The, 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 the Tisha B'av is on the day that the Beis Mikdash was burnt on Tisha B'av, so how, how could you fast before? But it's not true, because we learned in Tainus that really the Goyim entered into the Heichal already on the seventh of all. So therefore, even for Tisha B'av, the Puranias began already before. So the, you could have been mocked in the fast before. The Zman did arrive. Elamai by Tisha B'av, the Gemara gives a different reason. Because we don't want to be mocked them to fast before it's time. Before, because you don't want to be mocked them or put on his. Tone in a brayse we learned. Chagige. So the carbon chagige that's brought in the base of Mikdash. And the chal zman chagige. And then it also says in the whole time of the chagige. Ma'achren. We delay this. So the Gemara will explain what this brayse means. Bish le'ime chagige. The carbon chagige that's brought on a yom tev. And it says in this brayse that you delay it. That we know what it means. The imikle b'shabbos. If it comes out on a Shabbos, the first day of Yom Tov came out on Shabbos, so you're not allowed to bring the Chagig on Shabbos, so you delay it for the next days of Yom Tov, Lebasa Shabbat after Shabbos. El Zman Chagig, when it says that the Zman of the Chagig, you also delay the Mahi, what, what is this referring to? So the Gemara here will bring three Pshatim. Amar Avayshir, Avayshir says, Hachi Amar, it's referring to this. Chagige b'Shabbos. It's referring to the karma Chagige. If it if the Yom Tov falls out in Shabbos, so you have to delay it. But then it's also referring to another carbon that all Yidin are obligated to bring when they come to the Beis Hamikdash. The and also the Oilas which has to be brought every Yom Tov. Afila b'Yom even if it's not on a Shabbos, even just Yom Tov, the Zman Chagige, which is a time that you could bring the Chagige ma'achren. You don't bring it on the Yom Tov. You have to delay it to Cholamayit. What's the difference between the Chagiga and the Oil Asriyah? Chagiga is a carbon shlamim that you can eat the meat from it. So therefore this is a carbon that can be brought in Yantiv because it's Oichel Nefesh. 
and a, a malacha that's oichel nefesh you can do on yantiv. The oil of is totally burnt on the mizbeach, so therefore that, according to Beishame, as we'll see, can't be brought even on the time when the chagig could be brought. So mani, yeah, the oil of the oil of zman chagiga means that the oil of is delayed after yantiv it's brought in chalamayit. You never bring it on the on the on the. Floor. According to Bishama. According to Bishama. Let's see. The Gemara here brings the Mishnah. So Mani, whose opinion is this? Bishama. This is Bishama. The Tanan, Bishama Yemrim, Mivian, Shlomim, Biyamtif. You can bring your Chagige, which is a Shlomim on Yamtif, Vein Saim Chanaleim. You're not allowed to do the Smicha. Leaning on an animal on Yamtif is an Ismid Rabbana. You're not allowed to ride an animal. You're not allowed to lean on an animal. So you can bring it without Smicha. Avaloi Oilis. Any Oila, including the Oilis Re'ir, which is totally burnt on the Mizbeach, cannot be brought on Yamtif. Beisilalayim and Beisilal argue on both of these points. Mevi and Shlamim, you can bring the Shlamim. Ve Eilis, you can also bring the Eilis Re'ir. Ve Saim Chanaleyan, and you can also do the Smicha on them. So the Brai said before that said that you have to bring the Eila later is going according to Beishami's opinion. This is talking on Shabbos or during the week? Regularly on Yamtif. Yantif, even if it didn't fall out of so Shabbos. It's not okay, it's called Ma'achrin because, in contrast to the Chagige, which could be brought then, it's Ma'achrin of the Zman Chagige. That's why it's called Ma'achrin. You're right, but according to Bishama, it's always brought later. <coughs> Rav Omar, Rav says Chagige. What does it mean when it said Chagige and then it said Zman Chagige? Call Zman Chagige Ma'achrin. It's, what it's telling you is how late could you bring your Chagige? So it's not another carbon. It's referring to the Chagige itself. You can delay and be mashlim to bring your Chagige later. There's the Zman of the Yantif. Tfei loy. But after the Zman of the Chagige, which is the Zman of the Yantif, once the Yantif is over, you can't anymore bring your Chagige. The Tanan, as we learned in the Mishnah, Mich shalei chag bi Yantif erishin shal chag. You didn't bring your carbon Chagige the first day of Yantif. Chagig v'heilech has kol regal kula. You can bring your carbon Chagige the rest of the Yantif and the Yantif achin shal chag. So you can bring it all seven days of Sukkot and you can also bring it on Shmini Yatzeres. Over a regal, but after Yantiv, Olechog, you didn't bring your Chagige, Eine Chayyab Bachri Yusuf. There's no more obligation that you have to bring your Chagige. A third Pshat, similar, Rabashi Yom Rabashi says, Chagige, Vachol Zman Chagige Machrin, that you bring your Chagige, and if you didn't bring it in its time, you could be Mashlim, you could bring it all the time of the Chagige. What does this mean? Not only on Sukkis. Vafila Atzeres to Chad Yaime, even Atzeres, which is only one day, Machrin. You have that same time period of the Zman Chagige, which is the full Yontif that you have by Sukkis, to be Mashlim, to bring the carbon of Shvuas as well. Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, Maidem, Bishamim, Bishalullah, both Maide, Shemcha, Latzeres, Liyaz, Bishabis, that if Atzeres comes out in Shabbos, so then everybody will agree, Shiyoyim Tvoyach, Acha Shabbos, that today to bring your Karbonis will be after Shabbos. So this is going back again to the same Achloikas as we had before, on Shvuas, on the Yantav of Shvuas itself. Could you bring your Karbon Ayla on the Yantav itself or not? Bishamim says you can't, and Bishalullah says you could. But then the, the, the Mishnah there says, but if Shavuos came out on Shabbos, so everybody agrees that the day after Shavuos is when everybody would have to bring their carbon oil. And it would be called a Yom Tvoyach. And then, because that's what so many carbonas brought on that day. But then also you could continue being mashlim to bring your carbonas for all seven days, the Zman Chagiga, just like it is on Sukkis. Amar Abba Lazar, Amar Abchanina. Rabbi Natan Etiyah Bepurim. Rabbi planted... Something, a tree, or whatever, on Purim. The Gemara will explain this soon. And also, V'rochatz b'kroyna shal tzapayri b'shavosa b'tamuz. And he washed himself, he took a shower in the marketplace of tzapayri on shavosa b'tamuz. So this doesn't mean literally that he took a shower in the marketplace, but it, what it means is that he took a shower in a way that it should be public knowledge, that everybody should see that on a fast day, not only shavosa b'tamuz, on any fast day, you're allowed to shower. That's uh, Rashi's pshat. Kreinah Shal Tzipayri refers to uh, uh, the marketplace. According to the Aruch, Kreinah Shal Tzipayri refers to cold flowing waters that flo were flowing in that area. So he took a shower there, bathed himself there, so everybody should know about this. And also, Bikish Lakar Tishabov. He also wanted to uproot Tishabov. And Veloy Hoiduloy. They did not agree to him by, by, by wanting to uproot Tishabov. Taisus here explains, when it says that he wanted to uproot Tisha B'av, it doesn't mean he wanted to uproot the whole fast of Tisha B'av altogether. How could he say this? We learned in the Gemara Tainus, someone that does not fast in Tisha B'av is, uh, will not be zeichet to see the building of the Beis HaMikdash. 
So Elamai Tosa says, either he wanted to uproot the stringencies of Tisha B'Av, the fact that it's more stringent than other fasts, or he wanted to uproot Tisha B'Av and replace it to Yud of the next day. We learned also in the Gemara in Tainus, it says there that Rabbi Yechanan said if he was there, he would have established Tisha B'Av on Yud of because that's the main time when the Bishamikdash was burning. So now, what happened here? So who is reporting this? The story about Rabbi. Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar said this about Rabbi. So, Omalofon of Rabbi Abba Bazavde. Rabbi Abba Bazavde says to Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi, my Rebbe, loy kachoya maisa. This is not the story that happened over here. El Tishabov, Shechaliyez Bishab Bishavah. Really, he wasn't meaning to uproot anything of Tishabov. Even the chat that I said from Taisis, that's not what happened, that he wanted to uproot Tishabov. Rather, it was a Tisha B'Av that fell out on a Shabbos. V'dachinu l'acha Shabbos. And they pushed it off to Sunday. My Rebbe, and Rebbe said about this, Ha'il v'nitcha yitcha. Once Tisha B'Av was pushed off from its day, let it be pushed off altogether. And v'loi ha'idu l'chachamim. And the Chachamim did not agree to him. This is a Lashon of the Gemara, the Rebbe used to always quote this, Ha'il v'nitcha yitcha. That when Tisha B'Av falls out on Shabbos, so the Shabbos elevates, the whole, it transforms, it, it elevates the Indian, so therefore you can push it off altogether. Oh, yeah, this is it. So Koryaleo, so now after his student, Rabbi Abba Bazavda, clarified to his Rebbe, Rebbe Loza, what happened with Rebbe, so he said about this, It's better two, to, two together than one. If I would have only said this alone and you weren't here, I would have made a mistake about that Rebbe wanted to uproot Tishabov. But really it was that he wanted to uproot the Tishabov when it was a Nitche. <coughs> Going back to the other thing it said, that Rebbe, plant, Rebbe planted on Purim. The Rebbe, hey, he not on the Purim. How did he plant on Purim? But Tani Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said, it says in the Megillah regarding Purim as follows, Simcha o Mishta v'yomtif. Simcha means melamet shasurim behesbet. You're not allowed to make a hesbet on Purim. Mishta means melamet shasur betainis. You're not allowed to fast on Purim. It's interesting the Gemara uses this Lashon, that you're not allowed to fast. The Mepharshim discussed this. Why isn't the Gemara say Mishta means not only that you're not allowed to fast, but you have to make a Suda, meaning you have to wash with bread and you have to eat maybe Basar. So there's a big Machleikas HaPaiskim about this, whether the Mishta on Purim actually means that you're obligated to wash on bread. And then Afkimina would be, what happens if when you bench for, for uh, your meal on Purim, you forget to say Allah Nisim? Do you have to bench over or not? If you have an obligation to wash and eat the meal, so then if you bench, then you missed Alanism, you have to bench over again. But if you don't have an obligation to wash, you just decided to wash, so then if you missed Alanism, you don't have to bench over again. I believe that Allah Lamaisa is that if you miss Alanism and put him, you don't have to bench over again because there, there, there's no obligation to eat bread. And here the Gemara says, Mishta means that you're not allowed to fast. Okay? And now then it says, V'yomtiv. What is Yomtiv? Malamich, Asabasiyas Malach. It teaches you that you're not allowed to do any malacha on Purim, just like a yontif. So how was Rebbe planting on yontif? So the Gemara answers, Elo Rebbe bar ar beisahave. Rebbe was in a city where Purim was in Yudalit. And v'chinota b'chameisinota. And when it says that he planted on Purim, it meant he planted on Shushan Purim, on Tezvav Adar. In fact, the Gemara, Aini, is this true? V'ha Rebbe b'tveria ave. Rebbe was living in Tveria. Taisus points out there's different time periods where Rebbe lived. This is when Rebbe was learning with Antoninus. That whole time period of Rebbe's life that was in Tveria. And Tveria is And Tveria is a place that's surrounded with a wall from the times of Yeshua. So he, his Purim was on Tesvav. So the Gemara says, You're right. Elo, Rabbi Bar For Rabbi Purim was in Tesvav. When he was planting, it was in Yudalit. So now the Gemara discusses this itself. Wait a minute. What's the story with Tveria? Is it so obvious that Tveria is a city that's surrounded with a wall from Yeshua ben Nun and put him there is on the 15th? Chizkiyeh would read the Megillah and put him on two days, on the, on the 14th and on the 15th. Because he had a suffix. He had a suffix if it's surrounded with a wall from the times of Yeshua ben Nun or not. What exactly the suffix was, the Gemara will explain soon. But we see that he read the Megillah on both days. It says the Gemara, Yeah, Chizkiya had a suffix about this, but But for Rabbi, it was Pasha to him. And therefore he read the Megillah on the 15th, and when he was planting, it was on the 14th. 
Sakti Gemara Navhi Pshitale. Even if it's obvious to him that Purim is on the 15th, Mishari, is he allowed to plant on the 14th? Vaksiv and Megillus Tainis, and Megillus Tainis, which discusses many different dates. So there it says, Es Yoim Arba Asa, Ves Yoim Chamisha Asar, these two days, Yoim Puraye Inun, both of these days are Purim, no matter where in the world you are, Delayla Misbedbain, that you're not allowed to make a Hasbid on these days. So the Gemara now is thinking, just like you shouldn't be allowed to make a hasbid on both days, wherever you are, the same is, should be regarding Malacha, that you shouldn't be allowed to work on both days. And Vahamar Rav, Rav came and explained, What this Megillus Tainus is coming to say, even if you're in a place where Purim is Yudalit, you still not allowed to make a hasbid on Tezvav. Or if you're in a place where Purim is Tezvav, you're not allowed to make a hasbid on Yudalit. So we should say the same thing regarding doing malacha. So the Gemara says, no, that's not so. Hani mili behesped ubetainis. The fact that, you, that both of them are the same is regarding a hesped or regarding not fasting. Alva malacha yoim echad v'suloi. Not doing malacha, that's only on one day of Purim, not the other day. So the Gemara, any is this true? But v'harav chazi elahu gavre da'ava koshadi kisne bupuraya. Rav saw this individual that was throwing seeds to plant flax on Purim, and Velatye, and he cursed him, and Veloit Samach Kisne, and his flax did not grow. So we see that, so the Gemara understood that this was on either day, on Yudalar or on Tesvav. So the Gemara says, no, Hasam Bar Yoimav, that person was actually planting on Purim itself, and that's why he cursed him. Okay, so up until here, the Gemara is actually accepting the premise that Purim is like a regular Yontif, that you're not allowed to do any Malacha. And that's why the Gemara had to give a teretz that Rav was in a place where it was Tezvav and he was planting the day before in Yedalim. Rabbi Berei de Rav Omar, Rabbi the son of Rav said, No, fill the time be yoyme. Rav was planting on Purim itself. Hesped the time is Kabilu alayu. This mishtev is simcha, that you're not allowed to make a hesped or you're not allowed to fast, that he didn't accept it upon himself. Melacha like Kabilu alayu. This, that put him should be a yantiv, not to do melacha like a regular yantiv, that they never accepted upon themselves. How do we know? The may kodik siv, in the beginning it says in the Megillah, simcha o mishtev ve yantiv. Well, the besayv ksiv, what does it say later? La say saysam yimei mishtev simcha. Vila Yamtiv, like Siv, it doesn't say Yamtiv. The Eden did not accept upon themselves that it should be a Yamtiv. This is something which is also explained in Chsidis that the Yamtiv of Purim is not Asab Malacha, because all other Yamtiv, why is it Asab Malacha? Because there's an Aliyah in the world that goes higher than the Teva of the world. So you have to refrain from Uvdin Dacha, from the mundane activity in the world. But the whole Ness of Purim was Fakarat, Malubish in Teva, to reveal the Abishter in the Teva of the world. So therefore, there's no Isa Malacha. It's a different type of Yamtiv. Huh? Maybe also to some extent uh, huh? it came through Tevat, not not in the same way, not to the same degree. Okay, so the Gemara was a much later period. I mean, it's not. Uh, this is even in an earlier time period when they had Nevi'im amongst them and they could establish it. Mamish as a Yom Tov. So the Gemara. So wait. So for saying now that it's not also been Malacha, Rav my time alat yilahu gavre. So why did Rav curse this individual that was planting on Purim? You're allowed to do work. Answers the Gemara, Dvarim Amutarim, there are things that are permitted, but Vacherim, no Gubehan Isser, but people in that place, there's a minic that you shouldn't do work there, Hava, that's what it was, and therefore it was a minic. Over there, the minic was that they don't do any work on Purim, and this person was going against the minic, that's why he cursed him. But as for the Rebbe, in the place where Rebbe was, there was no minic not to do any malacha on Purim, so that's how he was planting on Purim. Be by same, or if you want, I can answer you. Loyalam no. Really, even in the place where Rebbe was, the minig was not to do any work on Yantif. On Purim, that is. But the Rebbe, Nitiya Shosimcha Nota. What Rebbe planted was part of his celebration of Purim. He was planting a planting that was joy. Kiditanam, you learned in the Mishnah. Of Ru'elu Nano. This refers to the tiniest that you're supposed to fast when there's no rain. And there's different sets of fasts, as we learned in the Gemara and Tainus. So then it comes to the last set of fasts, and they're not answered. So then, you have to do less business, and you don't plant. Again, you don't build, that is, and no planting either. And there's no chasimus. And we learned about this Mishnah. Binyan, when it says you don't build, Binyan shal simcha. It's referring to a building of a simcha. And a tia is also an etiyah shal simcha. When you're planting a planting of a simcha. If you're building a place to make a chasna for your son. What's a planting of a simcha? When you're 
when you plant an aburniki, so here Rashi says aburniki is this kind of tree that makes this kind of a shade, a beautiful tree that is used for kings that they sit under this shade. So it's some, some kind of a beautiful tree. So it's, it's a tree for shade or for pleasure. Then Rashi has another pshat that uh, they would plant this tree when a, when a prince would be born. And then later they would take the wood of this tree and use it to build a throne for this prince when it's time for him to be king. Okay, so the point is here that Rabbi was planting and this was part of the Simcha of Purim. Now the Gemara goes back to Tveria. We mentioned before Tveria. So what's the story with the city of Tveria? Why is there a suffix there? Gufa. So we learned before Chizkiya, Kari, Tveria, Barbeso, Bechamesa. Chizkiya would read the Megillah in Tveria on both days, on Yudalar and Tezvav, because Mesapkele, he had a suffix. We had a suffix. So just to explain this, did Yishayinim say, if you have a suffix, and here you're talking about something which is not a mitzvah in a So what's usually the Allah when you have a suffix about something that's not a mitzvah in a teireh? You have to be mekel. You go, you, you're lenient about it. But the thing is over here, you can't be lenient about this all the way. Because you're going to come on your dalit, you're going to say, do I have to read Megillah today? No, I'm going to be lenient. You come tomorrow, do I have to read Megillah today? No, it's a suffix, I'll be lenient. So you're not going to end up reading at all. So you for sure have to read one day. But still, why did Chizki have to read both days? The Rishayim here say that he should really read on Yudalit because most of the world are reading on Yudalit, so he should go according to the Rav and he should read on Yudalit. So the Rishayim say, yes, that's taka true, that he could have read only on Yudalit and he only read both days because of Midas Chassidus, but it wasn't Me'ikir Adim. But the Gemara now will discuss the Suffolk itself. What is the Suffolk here? Does he have a suffix about the city of Tveria? There's a Pasuk that says, The fortified cities with walls. And what does it say there? What are these fortified cities? Hatsidim and Tsar, or Tseir it's read, the Hamas and Rakas and the Kineris. These are fortified cities in Eretz Yisrael. And the Kaimalon. And we know that Rakas, huh? fortified. fortified. That's the, this is a city with a wall. Oh. Rakas zu Tveria. Rakas is Tveria. So it clearly says over here that Tveria was a city that had a wall around it. So the Gemara says, you're right, it did have a wall. But in the time of the Mesap Kalei, the reason why he had a suffix about this, Mishum Dechad Gisa Shuru the Yamahavis. On the fourth side, it's by the Mediterranean, so it has water. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a wall around it. Yihachi Zok the Gemara, Amay Mesap Kalei. Why does the Gemara have a suffix about this if on the fourth side it has water? Vadai Lav Chaimihi, for definitely if on the fourth side it has water and not walls, it's for sure not considered to be surrounded by a wall. The Tanya, we learned in Abraise, Asher Loi Chaim. This is speaking about the, the, the cities in Eretz Yisrael that have walls around it regarding a person that sells his house. So you only have time one year to redeem that house if it's in a city that has a wall around it. So what does it mean, Asher Loi Chaim? So we say, V'loi Shur Eger, it has to be a wall, not Shur Eger. What's Shur Eger? Shur Eger is a row of houses that are like a wall. That's not going to be considered a wall. And when it says in the Pasuk, Saviv, it has to surround the city. Prat Litveria, Sheyama That means you have to have a wall, all four sides. And you can't use the water on one side, that like a wall, and it doesn't have a wall on all four sides. So you clearly see that the, wall, the water is not considered to be like a wall. So the Gemara answers, regarding this halacha of selling a house in Bata Yari Chayma, that you could only redeem it for one year, there Yitaka doesn't have a suffix. But where is there a suffix? Here regarding reading Megillah, why is there a suffix? The suffix is, my prozim umay mukofin. The expression that it says in the Megillah, prozim, open cities, and mukofin means surrounded. What does this mean? The chsivi gabi mikra Megillah, that say regarding the Megillah. Is it, Mishum Dahani Miglu, Prozim means that they're exposed, they're open. Vahani loy miglu, and these are not exposed. So if so, vahani nami megalia. If you have a city that has a wall on three sides and one side is water, so it's exposed. It's also open. Oidilma, maybe the pshat is different. Mishum dahani mignu, vahani loy miglu. A city with a wall around it is protected, is fortified. And these uh, they don't have the walls are not protected. So v'hanami meganya. If you have water on the fourth side, so it's also protected with the water there. Mishumachim esapkele. That was the basis of the suffix that they had. Negeya tetveria. Mother brings another place. Rav Asi kari megillah b'hutzel. Rav Asi would read the megillah in hutzel. Bar beiser b'chameiser. Also on the fourteenth and the fifteenth, mesapkele yada safik in mekafes chami mi meis Yeshua benoni eloi. Whether it was surrounded with a wall from the times of Yeshua benon or not. 
Some Rishayim say that Hutzel was not in Eretz Yisrael. Hutzel was in Bavel. If so, you see that this concept of having a wall around the city and therefore you can read in Tezvav is not only in Eretz Yisrael. It's even not, well, Shushan is different. Shushan and Yeni always read Tezvav, even if it doesn't have a wall, but even Hutzel, which was a place outside of Eretz Yisrael, but other Rishayim disagree. From the Hemshech of the Gemara, it's mashma that this Hutzel was in Eretz Yisrael. The Gemara here brings, Ikid Amri, others said, Amr Avasi, Hai Hutzel, the base Binyamin, this Hutzel, which was in the territory of Binyamin, Mukafas Chaimim in Mais Yeshua, it was surrounded with a wall from the times of Yeshua, and therefore he read the Megillah there on the 15th.